Um, I hope to be, how should we say, uh, a little bit controversial, not for its own sake, but because I have disagreed with some of the things that are going on for Black History Month. It is true that in 1987, when I was chair of the London Strategic Policy Unit, um, I am following, in fact, advice from officers, um, introduced Black History Month to the United Kingdom. Uh, we happened to get the, what was it, the Commonwealth, um, the Commonwealth Institute in October. That's when we got it. So we then said, or I said, um, let's hold an event like this every, every year. Because, of course, the idea of Black History Month comes from the United States of America, and they hold theirs in February. And we happen to be in October, so it's very ironic that, um, that in the UK, now lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans uh, bisexual, transgender history month is in February, and Black History Month is in October, and in America it's the other way around. But when we introduced Black History Month, we used the political term black to mean people of African and Asian origin. That was our intention. If you look at some of the early pic the posters and some of the things that we did, it was clear that it was our desire then, and I have to say it's still my desire now, to ensure that we had an inclusive politics that addressed racism that occurred because of the colour of our skin. That's not to say that there are not other forms of racism. There's anti-Irish racism, there's racism, anti-Semitism, there, 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 there's discri discrimination against gypsies and travellers. These are real, and they are forms of racism. But the purpose specifically of Black History Month was to ensure that the experience and the contribution of black peoples to this country was no longer ignored and marginalised, as it had been for centuries, not even decades, for centuries. I was fortunate enough to be born in London in 1950. When I grew up as a small child, I had no idea that any black people had played any part in the war, the Second World War in particular. In fact, some of my earliest memories are of my mother being spat at in the street with my brother and I, by those who harangued her for marrying a black man in light of the sacrifices that, that white soldiers had made. When I was a little older, I realized that my father had himself volunteered for the Merchant Navy and was torpedoed three times, and he had volunteered to help the mother country. It was later, when I worked with the British Army, which is a strange thing for me to have done, but nonetheless, I worked with the British Army, and one of the things that I did was to get together an exhibition, which is now called We Were There, which charted the contribution of two and a half, and I, um, Ibrahim, you, you said one and a half million, but two and a half million Indian, as they were then called, we would now say Indian, Pakistani, Sri Lankan, Bangladeshi, men and women, and women, to the Second World War, and a further million and a half men, particularly in the First World War, of Indian origin. This is real, and it's part of British history. I could, I could spend, in fact, I've got some props here, just to remind me, because I curated the exhibition, I was just reminding myself, and I've got some small things that I think are an integral part of British history. There's a little, it's a small, you won't be able to see it, but it's a photograph of a, it's called an ambulance, and it was raised, the money for this ambulance was raised by the people of Jamaica. I have another one, also from Jamaica, of a tank. This is what Second World War activity by local communities. There's a, the, these are, um, the next picture is of, ah, the horrible things, large shells for, you know, shooting, killing people, but raised by the people of Sri Lanka, it was then Ceylon. There are many, many examples of the contributions. In fact, I happen to know that it was £23 million of money was given 
in interest-free loans to the United Kingdom in the Second World War by the Caribbean, by Africa, by India. £23 million pounds then, imagine, I, I don't know about you, but I quite like £23 million pounds now. How much money that was then? Interest-free loans. Did any of us hear about it? Because it is part of the war effort. And peoples who were not white, millions of them, raised money in villages and towns all over what was the empire. I think it's quite important because the war, as I know because of my age, the war, the Second World War, had a profound impact upon Britain in particular. And not once did I hear, in most of my life, before Black History Month, not once did I hear that any non-white person had played any positive part in that war, in the War of Liberation. It's the kind of thing that I believe we ought to know about because there are many young people who have a notion that to be a black young man is to be a gangster. It's a notion that they have got from the United States of America. It's a notion that most adults would not share and indeed most young people would not share. But enough of them to get the media attention to reinforce old stereotypes of what black means. And in, the, in that model, black is purely African. I don't like the word black in the context of black and Asian. I have no objection to Asian. In fact, I know where on the map Asia is. But try as I might, I cannot find where black is on the map. It does not speak to us having a sense of history or of place. We are simply defined by the colour of our skin and it's not good enough. If it was back in the 60s when we had to, re, we had to, we had to reinvent ourselves, particularly in the United States of America, we're not there now. We are now in 2008. We do need all of us to come together to celebrate those hidden histories of the peoples of this country. We do need to do that. I don't care if we rename it, we call it Black History Month, we call it something else, I don't care. We do need to do it, but can we please stop using the term black to mean African? Let's be proud of our African heritage. There is much in African tradition that I sometimes think um, the wider culture could learn from that we still have respect for elders as an automatic. It is still the case that African tradition, and when I say African I include here Caribbean traditions, and of course we know most, in fact all Asian traditions, have as an integral part respect for elders. It would be a good starting point, and those of us who are parents would, I'm sure, reinforce that.